before um, finishing up and moving to the separation of your eugenol from your other components, remember to remove all your dichloromethane first and get a weight of the clove oil. So you need a mass of your clove oil before moving on. So you're going to be doing an extraction three times. So you're doing this extraction three times with sodium hydroxide. You're going to be using actually 10 mils, not 100, uh, not 25 mils, so, um, 10 mils of sodium hydroxide. So you're going to take your clove oil and you're going to put in a little bit of um, the 7 mils of hexane into the vial with the clove oil, put it in your separatory funnel, use more of the hexane to wash out whatever is in your vial that you have of your clove oil. You're going to pour it into the separatory funnel. You can use more hexane to rinse out the flask. It's not that critical that it must be exactly 7 mils. You can add more hexane if you need it to get out. We need to get all the clove oil out of the vial. So if you see any residue still there, get rid of all of it. Put that in your separatory funnel, add 10 mils of your sodium hydroxide, and we'll talk about why this works and how it works. And so in your separatory funnel, I'll draw um, an image of what that looks like in your next slide, but you're going to separate the aqueous and the organic. You're going to wash again with sodium hydroxide the, the organic layer a couple times, three times, just to make sure you get everything out. The aqueous layer is where your eugenol is going to end up, and I'll tell you it's going to end up as a derivative of eugenol, so, you know, not quite eugenol. And then organic is everything else, like your eugenol acetate and all the other components. Um, you're in the end, after you do all the extraction, you're going to put all the aqueous layer back in. That's the eugenol and the sodium hydroxide and the water. Remember, sodium hydroxide. 5% means 95% water, so it's mostly water. You're going to put that all back in, and you're going to get your eugenol back out. And I'll explain how this works, like the uh, mechanism a little bit later. So you're going to use hydrochloric acid to um, get your eugenol back out. We want it to be about a pH of 3. Don't go too much lower than 3, and definitely don't make your, your pH must not be higher than three. Um, you're going to do this cold and that's because this is going to generate a lot of heat and it could even break the glass if you're not careful. And you're going to extract out with the hexane. So you're going to get your eugenol back out in hexane, do a TLC, GC, IR and get your weight. So you're going to take your separatory funnel. Again, I'm not an artist. And you're going to get your clove oil with your hexanes. And then you're going to add your 10 milliliters of sodium hydroxide. You're going to put that in, shake it all up. You're going to get two layers. The top layer is going to be your hexanes. And I say hexanes, it's not just hexane because it's different isomers of hexane um, in hexanes, plus your organic compounds um, like eugenol acetate, etc. What's in the bottom is the eugenol salt, and we'll talk about that in the next video, plus your hexanes. Oh, sorry, plus your sodium hydroxide and your water. You're going to separate into two. So the bottom is your aqueous, so keep that aside. Your top is your organic. You're going to take that and you're going to put it back into the separatory funnel. You're going to add more sodium hydroxide. So that's why I said repeat. You're going to end up with two layers again. You're going to draw off the bottom layer. So we're going to call it bottom two. After you shake and mix, 
again, uh, you're not just putting them together. You're shaking and mix, shaking and mixing, and venting in between. You're going to put your two bottom layers together, so bottom layer one and bottom layer two, which are both aqueous. And you're going to take your top layer and combine it, so organic two, which is your top layer, plus the original organic layer and combine them. And so um, to the bottom layer, after you do all your extraction, you're going to put it back in your separatory funnel. Um, after you've cleaned out the separatory, so rinse out the separatory funnel to make sure it's semi-clean. Then you're going to put your or, um, bottom layer, which is your organic layer, after you've added. So we're going to add HCl to this in ice. And so you're going to put that um, eugenol that you're going to get back, which is in that water. And then we're going to add hexanes. And the bottom layer is what you discard, and the top layer is what you're going to keep. And get that. So what is going on here? So in this case, like I said, you can use um, potassium hydroxide, some semesters I do that um, but you're going to react your eugenol with the base like sodium hydroxide and this OH is actually quite acidic because of the resonance associated with the ring and so you're going to end up with the alkoxide component And um, the sodium is just a spectator at that point, plus water. So this is going to be more soluble in the water. And where is this water coming from? It's because you have 5% NaOH. The other 95%, that's water. Like I said before, I'm using sodium hydroxide in this case. Eugenol is not soluble in the water, but once you make it the conjugate base, it's soluble in the water. And so um, the question you have to ask yourself is, will it be in the top or the bottom layer? So that's a question that you're going to be asked. Then once you get your eugenol salt, you're going to use sodium hydroxide to pre-protonate your eugenol salt back into eugenol, and it will go back into the aqueous layer. So make sure you check your pH so it's not um, too acidic. It needs to be around 3, but you don't want it to be too under acidic because it won't convert. So it needs to be around pH 3 for it to convert. Your solution is going to be very cloudy at this point because the eugenol is not soluble in water, and so it will be appear cloudy. So why are we extracting with hexanes? That's our first question. The second question is we're going to dry your material at the organic layer with anhydrous sodium sulfate. What is the purpose of anhydrous sodium sulfate? What do I mean by dry? You're going to filter out um, the anhydrous sodium sulfate. You're going to get the liquid. You're going to, this doesn't pertain to our class, you're going to evaporate off the hexanes in a water bath. And you're just going to get eugenol in one container and two, then the rest of the organics. So you should have two that you're going to get IR for, GCMS, and you're going to get um, our weights. So this is a quick overview of what your second week is. You're going to take your clove oil, and that's in the water. You're going to do an extraction with dichloromethane DCM. 
the bottom is where the clove oil is going to go and the top is the non-clove oil stuff that we don't want. We're going to take that dichloromethane layer, we're going to evaporate the DCM off. We're going to add hexanes to the clove oil. We're going to extract with 5% sodium hydroxide where the organic layer, which is going to be in the top because hexane is going to be um, at the top. And the organic aqueous, sorry, is going to be at the bottom. And that's going to be where the conjugate salt of the eugenol is. We ha add our hydrochloric acid, and that will make your eugenol become, um, go back in the organic layer. So this is going to be the eugenol in the hexanes. We're going to remove the hexanes, dry it with um, anhydrous sodium sulfate, um, remove the solvent, etc. And then we have our salt, which we, from our acid-base reaction, which we discard.